Good morning. So obviously I'm here today, so there is no baby quite yet. <laughs> but it is so good to see all of you here today. My name is Griff Caracello, and I have the privilege of being the pastor here at Sharon United Methodist Church. And I want to welcome all of you here to church this morning. Whether you are a member or a guest, we are glad that you are here. And whether you are in person or online, we are glad that you are here worshiping with us this morning. I want to invite you to find one of the attendance pads at the end of each pew and be sure to register your attendance because we would love to connect with you and to help you take your next steps on your faith journey. And we'd love for you to do that as well online. There is an online digital connect card that we would love for you to fill out today. While you do that, I have a couple of announcements that I want to share with you. The first is that you've heard this for the last couple of weeks, but now the countdown is on. We have 14 days until Vacation Bible School. And, <laughs> and we are very excited, as you can tell, about that. Um, we are still looking for volunteers, and so if you are interested in volunteering, you can go through here and go into the gathering space. There's a little green sheet that you can fill out to volunteer. But if you're also interested in registering your child for Vacation Bible School, you can do that in a couple of ways. We do have uh, hard copies of the registration form but you can also go to our website and register that way as well. I do want to share with you another quick announcement is that uh, we are still trying to update our membership forms. Uh, this is what you will find through these doors in the gathering space on the table. If you have not done that yet uh, and you are a member or a visitor who would like to update your information, please do that as soon as possible. Now, the final announcement that I have this morning is that I want all of us to welcome the Reverend Kathy Jones. She is a uh, dear friend of mine. She has helped me out in a lot of different ways in ministry and just in life in general. Uh, so I'm excited that she is here. She's going to be preaching for us today. Uh, and so let's give Kathy a warm share and welcome. As you can tell, when you look in the bulletin, there are a lot of things that are going on at Sharon United Methodist Church, so I commend that sheet, those announcements to you. But at this time, I want to invite you to stand as we worship God together, singing our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. At this time, I want to invite you to affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. The words will be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. In our opening hymn, there is a line that is one of my favorite lines in all of our hymns, is ponder anew what the Almighty can do. Ponder anew what God can do among us. In response to the God who is always at work around us, in response to the God who showers us with grace, in response to the God who is always generous with us, we have an opportunity at this time to give back, to respond to God's grace with generosity. And it is because of your generosity that God can work through this church to do new and amazing things, to welcome new members, to make disciples, and to make a difference. And so at this time, as we respond to God's generosity, I want to invite our ushers to come forward for the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we give these offerings to you. Use them according to your will, so that we would make disciples and make a difference in our church, in our community, and throughout the world. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and I want to invite the children to come forward for children's time with Miss Amy.
needed to listen to me tell another story. <laughs> you heard me this morning a little bit, didn't you? Yeah, we're going to listen to another little story. But I have a question for you first. Do you all know the story, the movie Toy Story? Yeah. Yes, most of you know that story, right? Well, Andy, the boy, the little boy in the very first movie had a special toy. What was that special toy? It was a cowboy. It was Woody. Well, how did we know Woody belonged to Andy? Because on the shoe, it said his name. That's right, because on the bottom of his shoe, of his boot, it had his name, right? Why do you think he put his name on the bottom of that boot? Okay, if he lost it, they know who the belongs. Do you think Woody was special to Andy? Yes. Yes. Do you have your name on some things of yours at home? Artwork. Artwork. Anything else? Do you have any toys that you might put names on? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What about a jacket? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What about school supplies? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, can you still share some of those things with a friend? Yeah. 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 If they, if they, well, yeah, in different times, but. You might, somebody might need to borrow a blue crayon. Is it okay for them to borrow that blue crayon? Yeah, yeah, yes. As long as, they give it back. as long as they give it back. That's right. <laughs> yes, that's right. We don't want to do that. <coughs> yes, you're right. Yes, sir. Um, he will. He always does. Yeah, he'll forgive you too. <laughs> All right. Well, in the next couple of weeks, you know that we're going to have some guest pastors. Well, they're going to be talking a lot from the book of Ephesians. And in that book, Paul is telling the people how much God loves him. And God loves them so much that he gave them a special mark through the Holy Spirit. Do you know what that mark might be? Let's see. I'm looking at one at the back of the church. There's one at the top of the church. Is there one behind me? So what is it? It's a cross. It's a cross, yes. So everybody's got that special mark. Now, people, Paul reminds the people that God marks us all with that special cross of Jesus. You know when you were baptized? Yes. Do you remember when the preacher or pastor took the water? What did they do with the water? And what else did they do? What did they do on your head? They took the water and they put a cross on your forehead. Why do you think they would do that? To show that we are now part of God's family. Yes, and that God loves you. So that you now belong to God. Once you're baptized and you get that cross, you belong to God. So just like Woody had Andy's name on his boat, on his boot, it always going to be there. Is that cross always going to be there on your head? Yes. Are you always going to be able to see it? Yes. <laughs> no, but you are going to know that it's there. Okay? So, before we say our prayer, I have a cross for you. So if you'll get your fist, show me your fist. I'm going to mark you so know that you're always going to be loved in our church, no matter what. Even when you make a poor decision and don't clean your room, you're still going to be loved. Okay, can I have your fist? Make a fist. There we go. You're welcome. All right, let's say a little prayer. Bow your heads. Yeah, can you bow your head and we're going to say a little prayer. Dear Lord, Thank you for making us yours and for making us, marking us with the sign of the cross. Help us to remember that all people are loved no matter what and that Jesus' cross connects us to one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Now go back to your seat.
most light and joy and challenge, but always, always make, makes us smile. You have beautiful children in the life of this church, and I want to say to you that you are a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> we have certainly been on a journey this last couple of years, have we not? Yeah. And, and I've been watching you because you've been online. And I just want to thank you for your faithfulness because we all have had to uh, struggle to adapt and figure it out. And even as we come together even now, we know that statistics tell us that people have an anxiety that is increasing, that depression is increasing, and I can't think of a better time for us to make disciples and change the world. So I am glad to be here with those who are online today, and I am so grateful uh, for Griff uh, uh, asking me to be here. I love he and his wife, Rachel. Uh, for some reason, they, they're just easy to love, aren't they? Easy, easy to love. Well, my scripture today is Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. Hear God's word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through the, his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. And with all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Christ we have also obtained an inheritance. Having been de destined and according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory and in him you also, when you have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to his praise and glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, I've read this passage many, many a times. As a matter of fact, if you were to look at my Bible, it has lines on it everywhere and circles around words because I've been reading, I love Ephesians, and I've been reading this a long time. But when I read it this time, to, in preparation for today, I heard something different than what I've heard before. I heard a battle cry. I heard, you have everything you need, now let's go. Reminded me a little bit of Ninja Warrior. I don't know how many of y'all watch Ninja Warrior, but I'm fascinated by it. Matter of fact, I would at my, my middle age, I would love to be one of those who, who didn't fall on the first thing that you have to do. But one of the things that the Ninja Warriors do they will get so excited, and either before they get ready, they'll go, let's go. And certainly if they hit that button, you'll hear them yell, let's go, let's go. It's almost like a battle cry to get ready. You're excited about what you're doing. And this passage excites me. For we are given that seal, that mark like Woody, right? And we are given everything that we need to do the work that he's called us to do. 
This passage says that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing from the very beginning. In other words, from the very moment of, our, of God's creation, his intention was to pour blessing, spiritual blessing, to walk with his people to fulfill the plan, to be in this full relationship with him. Now, one of the things that I think that I, I, I think we have some blessings of the pandemic. I think, first of all, we have had to slow down. And I think in that slow down, you, you cling to a God that gives you answers, that gets you through, and you draw closer to him and experience the blessing in the midst of the chaos. It's allowed us to think a little bit, to give us time. It's allowed us to be creative as we listen to God pushing us forward. Try this, do this. What's, gonna, what's it going to hurt? And so you step off into this place that you never thought you would. Spiritual blessing. I wonder sometimes if we often deny the fact that we are created in the image of God. I mean, how could we, with skin on, be created in the image of God? And yet, I tell you this truth, that we are, that you are created in the image of God. And we choose to believe this every day. What would happen for you and for me if we got up every morning and thanked God for being created in his image and went forth in that confidence that God wants us to have? That's the tenor of this passage. The tenor of this passage is not only has he given this the spiritual blessing, but he's one step further. That through Jesus Christ, we are adopted and incur an inheritance of God. That we are not just left as orphans, like, like uh, Christ said with the, when he was with the disciples, I am not going to leave you as orphans. You and me are adopted into the family of Christ and we are given opportunities to live a joyful and meaningful life in making disciples and changing the world we have this great opportunity I have a niece she is a mixed race and my white nephew and his white wife adopted Sarah. Sarah is presents black, and they have had to in her and they they came to her. She came to them as a baby from a family that did not feel like that they could take care of her. And Chris and Donna have taken this beautiful baby and helped her to grow into a beautiful young woman. And I often think about what opportunities she would not have had had my niece and nephew not felt the desire and the urge to claim her as their own. She knows Christ. She loves the church. And sometimes she can speak a word of hope better than anybody I know, even in the midst of her teenage angst. And from what I understand from Chris, it's alive and well. But she has an identity now. She has somebody who wrapped their arms around her. And look, let me tell you, Jesus Christ is doing that for us today. 
Can you feel him? Can you feel his presence? So the question for us is, if we are given this great gift, then how do we respond? Do we just take it for granted and hold on to it? Do we think we're entitled because we have a beautiful church to be a part of? Do we just want to stay comfortable and want to hear all the good things? Or do we want to roll up our sleeves and say, let's go. Let's go. Let's, let's get in to the messiness of what it means to be in ministry. Let's do things that we never thought we would do. Let's start a new a worship service, word and table, and, and live into the unsureness of that, but accept the faithfulness and the faithful step that that can be for your community. I was driving down the road today, and I've been here a couple of times, and I have to say that your environment, your context is changing. There are houses where there used to be fields with cows. You have smiles on your face. I saw you when you came in and y'all were talking with one another and you were enjoying each other's company and it looks so good. And because I'm an empath, I will tell you that it feels so good. We are adopted and we have an inheritance from God. All we need and here's the last piece of this scripture that for me is so very important, is that you and I never walk alone. We never walk alone. God has given us his Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit helps us understand the mystery of his will. See, God has a plan for you and me. No matter what station that we are in, no matter what age we are, he has a continual will for our lives. Part of that will is making disciples and changing lives, but he may ask you to do something specific. He may ask you, even though you are afraid of children, he may ask you to volunteer for vacation Bible school, something that you never thought you would do. But you know that our children are an inheritance. He may, he may ask you to give a gift that you never thought you would be able to, and yet he provides that way. He might ask you to sing in the choir, or like my husband to do a solo. My husband has a beautiful tenor voice, but he's very introverted and shy. And to ask him to do a solo, whoo wee scares him to death. Matter of fact, I used to have to stand beside him and sing with him. I would go low, and he, he would just sing out. But to be with him, so that he would do something that was really beyond himself to do, to use his gifts. We need the Holy Spirit so that we don't get lost. Now, I tell you what, I have a real friend, and I, we love to hike. Matter of fact, Griff's probably seen our hiking pictures on a regular basis. I know y'all do too, like to hike. But my friend and I get lost. We turn a five-mile hike into a ten-mile hike, and I'm, and I'm surprised we haven't been on the news yet. But just last month, we just, our husbands were on us. They were so worried about it's going out. We're not scared, but they were. So we eased their minds. We bought a Garmin GPS tracker so that wherever we are is, is satellite. It's got a satellite to it. So wherever we are, we can find our way back to the car. 
one way or another. It's eased their minds. The Holy Spirit is like that. He's like that GPS tracker that helps us make our way into the light. And we do that by intentional prayer. Not just prayer, but intentional prayer. Consistent prayer. Walking, driving, being outside in the church, prayer. By intentional devotion. And what I mean by that is being in God's word. We cannot do and understand God's will if we're not reading his word. And then intentional dialogue with each other. Intentional dialogue and conversation with each other. In other words, sharing our lives together and being vulnerable to talk about the needs we have but also the journey that we're on. You see, these are active choices. When we have everything that we need, would we not use it for the glory of God? Wouldn't we not say, let's go? Let's go do this thing every single day. I hope you hear the battle cry that we as God's people must be yelling. I want you to do this with me. Let's go. Let's go. Say it one more time. Let's go. Let's go do it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. At this time, I want to invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have marked us as your own. With your immeasurable love, you have drawn close to us and you have said yes to us, wanting and willing to work with us, through us, and even in spite of us at times. Lord, we ask that as we ponder anew what you can do, as we ponder the fact that you have marked us as your own, let us as a church united by your grace, united by your love, united by your Holy Spirit, join in the battle cry to say, let's go. Let's go make disciples. Let's go make a difference. Let's go change the world to look a little more like the kingdom of heaven. Lord, this day we ask that you would draw close to those who are in need, those who are th hungry, those who are thirsty, those who feel alone and abandoned. Lord, we ask that you would draw close to them Lord, be near those who are sick, for those who are grieving, and for those who are passing from this life to the next. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. We surrender our wills to you, and we would ask that you would hear our prayer as we join together, saying the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you all to stand with me and join together as we praise God in our closing hymn, Now Think We All Are God. sent out by God and his Holy Spirit, would you join me in saying our sending prayer? Father, give us grace to live this week to the full, being true to your word in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away in service to 